Councilor Murphy? I'm here. Councilor O'Donnell? Here. Councilor Sherr? Here. Councilor Nash? Here. Excellent. Um, has everybody reviewed the minutes of our March 13th meeting? I think Carolyn was here then. Could be. I move approval of the minutes. Second. Take good with you. All in favor? I was about to say second, but she did. All in favor, sure. Aye. 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 Well, everybody's in favor, so don't be not in favor. So is the, uh, are Mickey's hands in the right place now? I have 509. Okay. Play the Jeopardy music for a minute. <laughs> He <clears throat> says, oh, it's still 509. Microsoft time. Yeah. Um, you probably want to comment during the public hearing, not before, correct? I mainly came to listen, so. Okay. Then, that yeah, because we usually have public comment, but you're really our only public member here, so. I just came to listen in. You just came to listen. All right, if you get inspired during the public hearing and you want to make a spontaneous Thank statement, you. just Thank you. let us know when we welcome you. Still five on nine. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay, five, good. Here we go. Then, uh, do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, as fate would have it, Carolyn is here to do the encore performance of. Zoning uh, amendment, a modification to 350 20-20.19 and the R40 overlay. You're on. So um, I'm here again about 40R for um, mostly, um, actually two reasons, but primarily because while we are waiting for the state to review the language for the um, original 40R expansion that we talked about a month or so ago. Um, um, the city found out and, uh, and the developer found out, Valley CDC and, and um, community builders, that they were the awarded the contract by Mass Development to build out another portion of Village Hill. Um, and that includes the construction of affordable housing. So the, um, we decided, we contacted the state and they um, agreed that it would be appropriate at this time to also add a 40 hour overlay to this new portion of the state hospital. In order to do that within the context of the um, um, ordinance that was moving forward, we had to pull it back and re-advertise um, because this section was not in the original public hearing notice that was sent out and distributed. So um, the purpose of this public hearing is to sort of um, revisit that um, the ordinance, you can certainly, I can certainly go over the whole thing again, but um, I want to highlight the area that's the, the additional area um, that wasn't previously in that because that was what really triggered the need to go back for public hearing. So just to go over the 40R um, district, we currently have a, what's referred to as 40R in the city code. Um, it was originally just uh, located in the, on the lower left portion of that map, the green and the blue area. Uh, was designated around 2007. What that meant was um, the city, it, um, adopted rules that were established by the state as an incentive to create housing production um, in core areas or accessible areas that are considered urban urban growth areas. Um, by establishing this um, district and then approving plans that are developed within that district, the city is eligible for incentive payments by the state for each housing unit that's created that is also meets the affordability requirements set aside um, by the state and there's sort of standard affordability requirements across the board no matter what district and no matter what type of affordability or w under what um, approval process you go through. So um, uh, the original expansion was just um, to allow that same provisions to be utilized on a small par parcel east of t um, downtown on Bridge Street. 
um, and that's the um, little square in the upper right um, of the map, and that's what we were talking about a month ago. And then the revised expansion area is back at the State Hospital in that purple, oddly shaped um, geographic area just north of the existing two, what we're referring to as sub-districts. And it's an acre, uh, I mean, it's approximately 14 acres of land that would also be included in these guidelines and um, would um, allow the city again to be eligible for incentive payments just to create the district and then once or if housing is built that meets the standards, meaning it's affordable, um, the city would be eligible to apply for um, additional payments from the state on a unit by unit basis. Um, and so this area is generally the area that had been previously approved for development um, by a company that's now out of business, Transformations. Um, and so it's definitely an area that's been planned for um, housing development um, in the past. And the other piece of um, why, uh, uh, the other piece I want to highlight, um, and I've got revisions. These are just hot off the press. Um, I spoke with DHCD this afternoon, and there are some final little edits that um, I've made based on their comments. This is a red line version. So um, there were some um, things that weren't deleted that should have been deleted in one of the red line versions plus they added language that um, they wanted to see in our ordinance so this handout has changes from the one that was um, emailed to you all Can I ask you a quick question sure Super quick are, are the red line do the, do the red lines indicate changes from the ordinance that was originally submitted to the committee, or do they encapsulate all the changes to the current code? Um, they you know I mean? both. So all the changes all to the, the current, current code, code, including the most recent ones that you haven't seen, and I can go through there. There are just a few little sections that I can um, talk you through now, if you'd like, that were changed just today, okay. based on my conversation with um, the person at DHCD. Okay. So in other words, these, these reflect all the amendments to the current. Code. Right. So you could take the thing you already got and recycle it. it. Okay. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. But so this stuff is new. So it didn't go through the planning board's public hearing. Um, it it didn't. didn't go through, but they're not substantive changes. There are, um, you know, and as it went through the public hearings previously, there was always this understanding that the state has ultimate authority to decide what the how the language is um, spelled out so that if we didn't we weren't in fact the, the statutes say that the city council can't adopt this until DHCB signs off on it um, so that's correct the planning board hasn't seen these last edits so they when they did their public hearing it was in there but we're we making the determinate date determination that it wasn't substantive so it doesn't matter. I would um, assert that. Yes. You would assert that. Yes. <laughs> and there's nothing. None of these changes would have mattered to the advertisement for any of the public. No. Right and I, I'd be happy to walk through them. Um, yeah, we probably should. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to do the change. We're not going to. We're going to do the changes both the most recent ones and the ones that triggered us to be here today. Yeah. And is everybody comfortable with just doing that? I'm assuming since we don't have like members of the public here, uh, Laura, you don't need to hear this whole thing from scratch, right? No? Okay, so none of the, our one member of the public sort of doesn't need to. So we can, everybody go with just doing the changes? Yes. Yeah, just the changes? Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, as opposed to with the original yeah because yeah. we sat through the original one yeah and I yeah, don't remember so the public right. doesn't need to start from scratch so if, we, if you don't need to start from scratch I, we'll I, just I, the general concept was just yeah okay yeah. 
So the, the change to the, just going to the map change and just um, the text that's associated with that new 14 acre addition um, is that um, it's, we're referring to that as subdistrict C. So then we, we basically added text that corresponds to that map within the Village Hill um, Smart Growth District that um, stipulates the design stand, the same design um, criteria that's applicable to the subdistrict B um, is also um, applicable to C. And that was in the text that already was distributed to council. So um, that map expansion plus the um, definition of what happens in C um, was, is, was in the document that you received previously. What's in front of what I just handed out um, is that, let's see, I guess it would be page two under section um, 350 20.2, um, where it says design guidelines. Um, the um, subdistrict C needs to be added there as a reference for design guidelines. So it says for Village Hills Market Growth Districts, A, B, and then C was just added today, um, which corresponds to the map change. Um, the other piece, there's a red line sentence on yours um, that I believe says in accordance with 40R or something like that. That's a placeholder text. I actually had the actual language that um, I literally got 30 seconds before I ran down here after I printed that. But the language under design guidelines that um, the state would like is um, simply for the purposes of this section, the term design guidelines shall refer to and be subject to the requirements of the term design standards as provided for under section 10 of MGL 40R and 760CMR 59.04 parentheses 1. F. So that's just um, the state wanting to be sure that any design guidelines the city adopts will be consistent with um, um, the provisions of 40R that the design guidelines aren't so onerous that it'll prevent projects from happening. And um, they've already reviewed the design guidelines, but they still want this language in there. Um, then the next change is down under this paragraph that says monitoring agent slash administering agency. Uh, there was a question mark left over at, at 350 20.7, and then there was a question mark in parentheses. Just deleted that question mark. I'm sorry, what, where is the question mark? They're not, they don't show Not there anymore. But they don't get redlined out. It used to be there? Oh, so the question mark's not there anymore because it was a red line to begin with, and then I deleted it, so it basically didn't so accept insertion. Right, so it's gone now. Where was it originally? Um, right here under monitoring agency and administrative agency. Uh -huh. It's bold, 350.20.7. Oh. So it was right after that seven, the question mark is deleted. So the question mark is in your internal records. What, or was right. It well, so because order? it's redlined, added language, uh -huh. the state actually added that, and it was their question mark to make sure it was the right place. I see. And now we've decided it's the right place. We never so received the question mark. Yes, <laughs> we did. It's an imaginary question. We did receive. The no, question you mark. did. It would be in in the version of. Um, oh, I see. That we have. Yeah. The one that we were playing with version. before we got there. It's not. I don't uh, even. I don't even have uh, yeah. monitoring agent. We have multi-family development. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is part of the new stuff that you're just getting today. Is that no. Th well, that no. Um, has mm -hmm. been, I thought that went to public hearing the first time around because that was the first thing the, flag, the state uh, flagged. Oh. But at any rate, yep. it's mm -hmm. here now. They need that, that whole section about monitoring agents. Yeah. They have to have it in there. To, um, so um, perhaps it is sure. new from what you've had, <laughs> you have. But, um, okay. And so you wouldn't have otherwise seen a question mark then, because it's not in that other version. <laughs> okay. 
So after that, in the overlay district section 20.3, um, there was a strikeout in subsection <coughs> B. Do you have the strikeout language there? There are multiple things that are yeah. struck. So these are districts, not zones anymore? Right. So that whole section comes out and <coughs> merely the sentence sub, sub districts may be created within an established mark of district. It just cleans this up because originally the only thing we had at Village Hill were two sub districts and so it was sort of defined here and instead of defining it here it's going to be defined in 20.18 so it essentially got moved um, and then this just becomes a definition of what the fact that you are allowed to create a sub-district within the smart growth overlay. Um, and then just below that under permitted uses 20.5, um, D, the permitted uses are single family, multifamily, townhouse, and additional uses as detailed in 2018 and 2019. And then turning the page to 20-9. Um, under parking requirements, for the units built in accordance with 20.19 below, comma, parking, the word parking was added. And then the rest of it is the same. And that's it. And then the rest of the document is the same as it was before. Yes. May I ask a question? Oh, certainly. What What is your timeline? look like now in terms of the approval of all this and when do you need action from the city council? So um, I my hope was that it would go to city council at the next meeting. Uh -huh. um, I, so my contact at DHCD says that now he's ready to send it up for a, a final approval letter from the executive um, director essentially who would write you know, a letter stating the city of Northampton has been approved this new uh, amendment. And then um, he, it sounded as though that would be no problem to have that for next week's council meeting. In terms of the project, is it is it necessary to have it by next council meeting? Or ex is it important to have it by next council meeting? Um, well, maybe I'll I've, yeah. tell you why I'm asking. What's that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why I'm asking. Okay. It's purely for technical. Like the the red line document you provided is, is excellent. I mean, it's exactly it shows all the changes to the code. Um, the background of this is, you know, the House of Representatives just passed this health care bill, and no one read it. You know what I mean? And zoning is 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 complex, and the red line allows you to see exactly what all the, all the changes that are being made. And in fact, there are even new changes today that at no fault of your own, new, new changes are coming. Um, and I just, I wonder if this committee should, should have a rule at some point that we require all the changes to be, to be shown because it's hard to go through all of it and do our due diligence in support of what you're doing if we don't know each, each of the changes. Um, and so for me, I, I would be in favor of advancing it to the council if it's if it's necessary I would probably just spend more time and I might have annoying questions about it in council <laughs> you know um, you know for example there's like I see typos in it, you know stuff like that that I wasn't able to see before which is not a criticism it's just a question of timeline um, yeah so that that's my but if it's necessary to, to get the ball rolling for the for this project on Bridge Street in particular, then I'm, I'd be fine with it for. That's why I asked the question, and that's just my general comment about being able to see what changes are in the ordinance. What's sort of the role of this committee to scrutinize it at that level? So. Yeah, I think it's interesting just to respond to that. Yeah. I think 
We've done it both ways. Yeah. We submit red lines and then yeah. we say it's too confusing to see that. Just send us the clean version. I suppose so. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, we'll provide whatever version <laughs> makes sense. And certainly we can do the um, edits um, to get rid of the, yeah. you know, the spacing and the typos yeah. and things. And sometimes with the red line, it's, you know, you can't pick that up right away. Yeah. So I know problem doing that either way. I don't know. Um, there's no sense of urgency on our offices um, mm -hmm. end, so it's fine. I don't know how Valley CDC feels about, you know, whether they need to start planning, you know, one way or the other. So I wouldn't want to delay it for technical reasons, I guess. Um, and certainly we owe it to you to communicate the way we want. The way I want it is I want to be able to see the changes that are being made to the current code. That's mm -hmm. all. Okay. For everything, because it's, um, you know, in, in Matthew's vernacular, it's wicked complicated. I mean, it really, it is. Like you're referring, yes. you know, you're referring to different sections, and I, you know, anyway. Right, and then particularly so. in this one, it looks like we're deleting a lot, but in fact, you're moving it to a different section. Exactly. So you're not so really deleting it; you're just, you know, relocating it. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Please? Yeah, I, I, you know, I prefer the red lines too, um, and um, yeah, in, in getting them in in a timely manner ahead of time to, to review them. And these last minute, ch you know, these these are okay. I'm okay with that because the bulk of this I had a chance to go through. Uh, but yeah, I like the red lines. I mean, because I was doing today. I was using I was using what we were originally sent, and I was comparing it with the ordinance online. Oh, and, yeah. and I'm like, oh, so that's, you know. Yeah. And, but I actually discovered things like, you know, oh, we lifted this whole section on the design standards from other sections with, within the zoning. So, um, uh, so that's my comment on that. Um, I, thank you for the correspondences clarifying a lot of this stuff to me uh, that, um, that, uh, that was really helpful. Uh, some of the questions that I was asking Carolyn um, uh, via e email had to do with, you know, you know, can these districts be, can we have an overlay anywhere in town? And the answer is we can do this in, in any of the zones, correct? We can do it in technically, uh, well I shouldn't say technically, we could do them in any of the zones, however, there are frankly some zones in the city that don't match the state's right. um, the criteria. goals. So you couldn't really do them there. I mean, they right. wouldn't. You wouldn't get any benefit from doing it, um, and it might not be the right location for increased density. Right. Um, but the idea, it, you know, we've talked, and I think we I, we talked about this at the last public hearing, that um, our office has looked at different places around the city where we might put, apply the overlay, and we just haven't taken that step because we're. You know, frankly, there wasn't a compelling immediate need to do it because we weren't seeing anything for the future. But say, for example, one of the things we talked about was um, just in planning terms, and not saying this is happening, but we talked about the Lyman Estate, <laughs> um, putting an overlay there. Um, or at one point, you know, we talked about the VA hospital. Maybe that's a good point. But now that whole concept about what's happening up there for the long term has changed. So there's no, we're not really going to pursue that because that's not going to be a place where we're going to have new private development of this kind. Um, but, you know, maybe there are other places in the city where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, but to generalize that. The, to meet the criteria, it's going to be in in a in a downtown or in a village center type of setting. Yes, okay. because you have to have access to public transit, um, you know, walkable or bikeable locations. They wrote the the whole goal of this um, is to encourage new housing development in um, in areas that make sense from a sustainability perspective and transit networks and um, access to schools and goods and services. And, and to do a, no, a new overlay, we would have to go through this process again. That's right. So there's lots of public input. And right. So so we'd have to go, we'd have to go through a public hearing process to expand the map. What this change does and what, 
and it was set up to do that when we were even just talking about the little rectangle on Bridge Street. Um, the idea was to restructure the ordinance so that it's easier just to make a map change without having to go back and change text. So we sort of set up right. the um, framework so it would be easier in the future. And it also now is consistent with um, revisions to the 40R statute that happened after we originally adopted it. Um, and who know, you know, you never know if there'll be more changes to 40R by the next time we go through this, but um, anyway, this cleans it up from the state's perspective and also makes it a little bit easier for us to do expansions later. Um, you haven't had a turn yet. <laughs> um, did you say there's an incentive just for creating or expanding the district? And do you... Can you tell us what that is or how they? No, um, I think just these are generalizations. There's no guarantee that the state's going to pay. Uh, um, but so depending on how many new units you get, there's an incentive payment. So the Bridge Street one, there'll be an initial incentive of payment. It will, will be not, you know, we don't know, but it's estimated it could be up to twenty thousand dollars just for creating a district, and then per unit. And then per unit mm -hmm. after that, it's three to five thousand, depending on whether the legislature funds this pool of money that's set aside for this purpose. So it's all contingent on several things. Yes. And the village hill, because it's a bigger area um, and more units, the in, the initial incentive payment is much larger. So the state is always. So their promises are always subject to appropriation. Subject to appropriation. So but and that's a, we, right. We're going to do it if we do it, but if we don't do it, you're not going to get the money. Right. Yes. And then, and that, and that's another reason why we want to make sure this language. They're happy with this language because then they can always decide. Well, your language doesn't meet our criteria. We don't need to fund you. <laughs> but do we get a per unit incentive regardless of? whether they fund that additional incentive for the creation? No, it's all, so it's first all you, dependent. it's all dependent. So first you get an incentive payment, and then once the units are constructed, or as they're constructed, you can apply for, for those additional payments. But it may be like in between those times, the pool disappears or, you know, whatever happens to the budgets changes that outcome. And how many units could there be in C? Well, we set it up for 21 dwelling units per acre. You know, straight mathematical calculation, you could just do 21 by 14 acres or whatever, 13, yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that's how many will be built. But that's sort of, that's how they base their incentive payment, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor. Is the 20% affordability uh, uh, percentage um, is that in, this, in the 40-yard law? Mm -hmm. We have to do 20%, mm -hmm. no more, no less. You can do more, Could but no, no less. Um, um, that's what they want, that, that's what they need to see, yeah. Did you consider, Per project. Got it. Did you consider putting a higher standard in our ordinance above 20%? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess the, because, um, you know, I think we want to disperse um, and mix housing um, to the extent we can. And um, I guess particularly the state hospital, I think we already have, so we initially had this 50% um, of the original units that we wanted to make affordable. And so this is sort of a bonus on top of that. Well, with the private developer, you give them an incentive if they go to the 20%. But in, in the economics of their reality, they, they're building marker rate units as well. And the entire project cost has to work. You know, with the market rate and the affordable, you don't want to require them when they get the incentive to hit a target that's so high that economically the project doesn't work anymore. Right. On the other. That's one way to look at it. We also are typically getting housing 
um, developers that are that just focus on um, affordable housing, and so their pro formas are based on you know seeking different accessing different sources of funds that just are for affordable housing. So mm -hmm. sometimes we get you know ninety percent of the project. Well, if it's Valley or half, yeah, and their funding mechanisms are to create affordable housing, right? But if you've got a market rate developer that does market rate housing and they want the incentive. And you're saying, well, to get the incentive, you have to add affordable. It's kind of hard to make it over 20% and have their original concept right. work. Right. You know, but if their if their purpose is Valley or HAP and they're in the affordable housing business, then yeah. they have other motivations and other funding sources. So, it works. For them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, was the number of parking spaces required for the Bridge Street parcel reduced? I see it says no more than five. I thought you had like a bunch of parking planned. I know we're talking about theoretical versus actual. Um, what are you saying? And we're five? talking about a project, not the zoning. Yeah, so there, there's nothing that's been determined yet about the project. There is an allowance in the zoning for the board to reduce the number of required parking spaces. Oh, really? But you may be, if I'm looking at your the where design. you are, the design standards say that if you have more than five, you have to design it in a different way. I don't know if that's what you're looking at. But that's oh. the planning board, not us. Right, so we just have to set up the structure for the, de the design standards. DHCB has to look at them and say they're okay with them instead of having them referenced to another code. Yeah, okay. So it's so. really just copied and pasted from the existing standards the city already adopted for okay. A and B. Yeah, B and C district. Okay, yeah. that's another question. Yeah, because we're adding C. Um, well, because of the, we're adding the right. area on Bridge Street that's, yeah, I don't know. Right. Did, can I ask another question? No, yeah, please. Um, did I understand that you, you wanted to set up this ordinance so that you could just, you could draw further districts on the map without having to come back and amend the code and have them come into effect? Is you still have to amend the code, but potentially we'd only have to amend the map not the text that goes with the map. That's what I mean. Okay. It still well, would have to go to city council. The map would. The map change, yeah. Which is part of the ordinance. Right. Um, right. Wouldn't you well, have to add, I'm sorry, like C, if you add, if you're adding C, wouldn't you have to add like D, E, F? So this is my question. <laughs> yeah, which I didn't get the. Uh, sorry. Please. So it depends on where it is. So we've already set up some districts within the Village Hill Smart Growth. So this ordinance now says there's a Village Hill Smart Growth, and then there's, uh, what, it, what was it called? Urban, um, Urban 2019 is called something else, which is. <laughs> That's the Urban Residential. Sustainable urban growth. Residential Sustainable Growth Overlay. So the urban residential sustainable growth overlay, which is what we're calling the Bridge Street piece, could then be, we could use that same name for other parts. And yes, maybe we would create a sub-district within urban residential, but we might not need to. We might just um, draw a circle on a map and say this is also the urban residential um, smart growth area, and the same rules apply to that one. It just depends on where, you know, where that happens. So if we go over to Lyman and we just react <laughs> that whole thing, <laughs> um, then, you know, we decide do these standards make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I was wondering, do you need like a default section? Like you have the Village Hill one, you have the, whatever it is, the Bridge Street one. Do you, would it be helpful to have a section that says for all other not okay. right now, <laughs> because the, the state has to approve that and understand where that's going to be. Uh -huh. So right now, it's sort of set up that this, the default one is the second one that right now is just Bridge Street, essentially. Please. So this is a process question that I have. I mean, this document that I was going to send back to City Council turned out to be 13 pages of very small print. And this, this one ha happens to be 10 pages and the print's a little larger. So I, I was trying to correlate the two and found that it, this some of this stuff is no longer 
in the original version. So, so there were two versions floating around, and this is partly because the state asked to see the whole thing. So the state, and so the 13 page may be the one that includes the entire document, even sections that weren't modified. Right, and, I, and then this one that's in front of you, and it also may have been, sh it was maybe shrunk down because the, the way that the track changes work on the side, you know, getting the margin there um, reduces the amount of area it can cover. But the one that I just handed out is only the section, are only the sections that are being modified within the entire ordinance. Right, and I, I guess my question is, um, I think, I'm pretty sure Councilor O'Donnell had asked that the entire document, the entire section be sent back to City Council. And this is what you ended up giving us. So if, you know, if you want to have just this, the changes sent back to Council, I just want to know what, you know, how you want that to work. I, I would suggest, I think, I think Ms. Powers is right. I think because of, we, we're, we're like the state, we want to see the whole thing. You know? <laughs> And we'd also want to see the, the red line. Okay. I think that'd be preferable. So the whole thing and then the red line version of wh where the changes actually occurred. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, um, and, and well, I'll leave it up to you to just, you know, if you'll, you want that back to another subcommittee meeting or um, to go over it again before it goes back to full council? Are you saying? Well, I mean, week? we've seen it. Okay. But we want them to be able to see the detail that we've seen, so they're not just taking our word for it if they choose to actually yeah. delve into it. Yeah. Yeah, that's no problem. If this weren't pressing, I would not. I would want to not act on it today. But because it's related to a matter of importance, more three. We don't want Laura to jump out the window. And we want to <laughs> preserve the mental health. We care about. <laughs> um, oh, so you don't care. <laughs> uh, we care about both. Well, Laura's been shaking her head and nodding what we should do. So, is there a deadline? Do you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, actually, for both these projects, both the Village Hill and the Bridge Street. Why don't you come up to the podium and introduce yourself so sure. so the people watching the home version will know, you'll be able to hear you better and know what you're talking about. Great. My name is Laura Baker. I'm the real estate project manager at Valley CDC. Um, and both projects are on a schedule to try to meet the next state funding round. And to be eligible to go in, you need to have site control and you need to have zoning approval. If you don't go in. Um, and so that puts some pressure in terms of just kind of keeping things moving along so that we know we can meet those deadlines. Um, so that's, that's the urgency of the situation. Um, would a month break us? I don't know, but I'm suggesting if it's not a substantive issue that it's sooner still needs better to be than discussed, later. then time does matter to us. It's not all the same um, whether it's this month or next month, because we, we start to back up against those end deadlines that we need to meet. But yeah, that's why I asked. Thank you. Yeah, I totally understand. And thank you. And thanks for making that clear. Um, so, I mean, I, I want to advance it. I think it might just um, produce some, I don't know, we may, we may discuss it in city council again in more granular detail than mm -hmm. we like to, but mm -hmm. that could be fine. Yeah, I mean, I do it think it, it's good to give them the entire thing and then the red line version for the full council so if they choose to delve into it, they can actually see what changes were. Yeah. They're actually making and how it fits in all of that. Yeah. Um, how about 17.289, the changes being made for us, because that's also another thing, to conform with uh, the state's changes to the Municipal Modernization Act? Sure. So um, this ordinance um, amendment is uh, relates to the time limits in which permits um, are valid to exercise once they've been issued by um, a public uh, um, hearing authority. So planning board, zoning board, um, for the most part. Um, also, this includes our Central Business Architecture Committee because 
they that committee's permit process follows the same guidelines as for special permits and site plans. Um, so in the city's zoning ordinance section 4.7, um, there is language that's that mirrors the state statute um, that said, or originally that said, um, that you need to ask anyone who obtains a permit from a special permit granting authority needs to exercise that permit, meaning start a project that was issued under that permit within two years of the valid date of that permit. So that's after an appeal period has expired and someone can actually go and pull a building permit. Um, that's the way it's been on the books for years and years and years. In 2008, the legislature passed an emergency bill to automatically, no matter what, nobody had to come back for anything anywhere in the Commonwealth, automatically extended permits. At that time, I think the original ex extension act was for two years. So instead of having two years in 2008, you could get four years without having to check in with anybody. The legislature just decreed it. Um, that was followed immediate, uh, you know, two years after that with another extension that was four years, <laughs> and it was in order. It was an economic development revitalization kind of emergency measure, um, just acknowledging the fact that the economy had slowed down substantially, and that would affect the ability for people to get loans and actually start the projects in, um, for which they've been permitted. So that added another four years um, to the period in which someone could act upon a permit. Um, that, those four years just ran out last year. So as part of this municipal modernization, there was a provision added that said just permanently, you know, instead of going back to two years, let's just allow municipalities to um, provide for a three-year um, permit. But it was an enabling um, so authorization. You have to adopt it, otherwise the default is two years and would continue to be two years. So we felt like um, you know, the state was giving that provision, that allowance, and that it made sense. The boards are granting permits. If they really felt like a project wasn't appropriate, you know, it shouldn't be appropriate within two years or, or three, three years. years. <laughs> they wouldn't have given it the first place. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes the issue comes up where maybe ordinances change and um, a project you know, might not be allowed or might have to fall under new guidelines, but one year, a one year window isn't really that much longer. So um, the mayor and our office felt like it was appropriate to go ahead and um, Adopt make that change that the state enabled. So that's really all this does. It does it for um, the central business architecture permits that are issued as well as the planning board and zoning board permits. All right, any questions on that? Um, <clears throat> Is it, it's not just deletions, what you're proposing, to the current code, to, to section 4.7? No, so there are more additions than there are deletions. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the additions are not, I don't know what's an addition, unfortunately. Yeah, it's okay. another, same issue. So, you know, I wonder if it's the way that, um, because this is the way I always do the ordinances, red line, oh. I'll pass that okay. around. Thank you very much. So I don't know if it's in the transfer of email, but, um, and that the way different computers are set up to look at the track changes. Yeah. And so I think that's probably what's happening. Um, I can certainly, you know, I can send a PDF <laughs> of that. I think the issue is I do download exactly what she gives me, mm -hmm. and you can see it all colored and pretty like that and it's probably on the agenda but I don't have a color copier mm -hmm. so that's the right. issue I mean yeah no I tell you you know you look at the taxi ordinance for example you know we we'll just use bold and underline for addition and strike through for I me mean, I realize that might be cumbersome but so like the comments that comments in lavender that doesn't show up on the right. printout I don't know why well, we don't need, yeah. Well, so the other thing is I could also send it as a PDF so that, you know, it's, it's, you're going to see exactly the way it tracked, um, if that's mm -hmm. helpful, but it's also, you know, you can't change PDFs <laughs> electronically. They are. <laughs> right. um, okay. 
Please, you've got, you got a document we don't have, so feel free. Hey, let me pass this down after I like sort of. Um, okay. Um, well, this is time to. I won't, I won't suggest amendments. We're in a public hearing. It should say, I would think, unless it's, it's because of whatever state zoning statute that's behind this, it should say upon enactment, right? Not, it's not just a council vote, like the mayor has to sign it. It says this section shall become effective upon council vote, but really become effective upon enactment, which requires the mayor to sign it. Is that fair, or is the council vote actually, for some reason, the triggering? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I can double check. Alan Seawall did review it. I can double check with him to see whether that's the appropriate language and just bring it back for next week, whatever um, one is appropriate. Typically, I mean, at the statutory level, they say when the um, legislative body adopts it oh, really? for a town, the it, it goes through town meeting and then the AG has to approve it, so it's not until the AG approves it. But for cities, they approve before town meeting, don't they? No, they, well, they have to pre approve. They sort of pre approve. Right. <laughs> okay. But you never know what happens at town meeting, you know. They could be modified, right? Uh -huh. So then they have to approve the final. Oh, I see. Okay. We'll let you look at this one. But these are the changes in language to the big giant document we have that doesn't show where they are. While we're waiting for her to look at it. I don't even, I, I'm not really, this section becomes effective upon council vote for all valid permits issued. <coughs> By the planning board, the central district architecture, Right, so what that means is any permit, what that language is specifying is that if I took out a permit six months ago, and at that time, two years was the window, with this adoption, that automatically makes it three years. That's what that language means. Um, but we can also, uh, what I think Councilor Donnell is wanting to make sure that it's not just the council vote, but it's council vote plus the mayor. mayoral. Yeah. Who is one of the sponsors, so we can make the general assumption he's going to sign it if we pass it. Theoretically. The day after, right? Theoretically. Yeah. All right. And these are these are just really only for the ones that are in the pipeline, right? Or any new. Well, ones. and then future ones. So the ones that apply after next Thursday, um, assuming that it gets Friday. Started. No, it's got to have two readings. Right. So it'll be. Okay, in June. The permit's coming in June, <laughs> and then the ones that are still yeah. in the active um, phase of having been approved but not started. Okay. You want us to take a peek at that? It's okay. Well, while she's taking a look at that, I guess we're done with our other questions, right? So well, I have two quick questions. Please, go ahead. So, um, the incentive money that we get from the state, does that go to a particular account or does it go to the general fund or where does it go? Um, so, it goes to uh, basically the, um, it, it doesn't go to a specific account. Um, you know, it would go to a pool of money the mayor then would look to allocate it. And so, kind of like the traffic mitigation yes. funds or something? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. And then the other was, so what was the, something about 1.5 persons per bedroom was taken out. What was that? What was, that's the rule. I don't know. The okay. state. That's the part that the that that all of those criteria are based on what the state. Um, so they used to have that in there and then took it out, or yeah, or they measure it by different means now. Okay. That's it. So you're good with what you want? Yep. You're good with that? Okay. That's it. Just one more. Um, what is a central business architecture ordinance? They issue, that's what we call their enabling 
There's a there's an ordinance um, for central business architecture review. So the process and the guidelines that um, are to be followed for projects that are within the boundaries of the central business architecture um, district. Okay, so it doesn't imply that they somehow promulgate regulations in the form of ordinances. No, it's they a, issue permits, and their permits follow the process. The permit process yeah. mirrors the site plan special permit process. So they have a they have an established um, procedure yeah. and permit review. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading it says to provide consistency even though a central business architecture ordinance is distinct from zoning ordinances. Yes. The committee shall X, Y, and Z. Right. So zoning is um, is authorized under mm -hmm. chapter MGL 40A. Mm -hmm. um, central yeah. business That's local a, is a local ordinance. That was a home rule thing. It's a home rule thing. I mean, it's any like any ordinance the city wants to adopt, so it's under a separate category of ordinances. And so we have to no, I got that. specify that yeah. it, even though we it talks similarly or speaks the same language as zoning, it's not to be construed as a zoning ordinance. And, and 156, is that the section that? That's the city code section. It establishes a central business yes. architecture yeah. committee. Yeah. So zoning street 50 and exactly central right. business and central business is 156. Yeah. So, so that is other language that I feel should be clarified after the public hearing. Um, and the only effect this has on central business is to like the other entities simply extend their permits to match the other ones. Right. So uh, what do you, what do you, th I, I'm not quite clear on what you think needs to be clarified for 156 6B? Two things. Um, well, in terms of the overall ordinance, I realize to some this may be me harping on too much detail, but I think it's important. I think each section in an ordinance should clearly state the changes that are being made to a, a section of, of, of the code. So. This ordinance actually contains two sections, and it's not clear immediately. Say section one, that chapter 350 shall be amended as follows, and then this should essentially be what's the equivalent of a red line. And then it should say section two, that chapter um, 156 be amended as follows. I, I thought I was looking at two things within the same chapter. And in terms of the text, you know, to provide consistency, I mean, this should just say, it currently says, to provide consistency even though a central business architecture ordinance is distinct from zoning ordinances, the committee shall. It should just say the committee shall. Um, it, that's, that's how it should start. And so the this is shall. existing language that's in the ordinance in that section? I don't know, I don't know where the red line went. Oh, I have it right here. This is the this is all existing. So it's just what's already there to make it clear to the public that okay. these timelines, even though it's not zoning, it still follows you have to refer back to zoning. Okay. So that's existing. The only thing that's being added is that one line. We should if it's germane, we should we should nonetheless strike the first phrase because it's completely confusing. I would, uh, and that's not from the planning department, it's vestigial. Any yeah. other? Do you know what I mean? I do, but I don't. I think the idea is to make it clear to anyone who reads the ordinance mm -hmm. that this that in zoning there are certain timelines, yeah, and that this is not in zoning, but we're going to follow the zoning timelines. Yeah, that's why I think it should just say the committee shall use because presumably it's in the section that it already references the central business architecture committee. The committee shall use the same public notice and timeline requirements for permit applications as is required under the State Zoning Act, etc. Rather than start it by saying, to provide consistency, I mean, first of all, it's an ordinance, so we don't have to put in our intentions. To provide consistency, even, even though a central business architecture ordinance, it's talking about an ordinance, but really mean like our ordinance, uh, is distinct from zoning ordinances. 
which of course it is. I mean, I, I think it should just say the committee shall. That would be my suggestion. Mm -hmm. and, and the bottom line decision is Councillor Seawalls, I assume, because he's the one that has okay. to bless all the language. Well, he, yeah, I mean, I could check with, I mean, that could be the case. If he feels like it's important to make sure that we still distinguish between the two, he may want to keep this. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't think it's necessary, then, you know, it'll be up to you. But you can bring it up to him, correct, yeah. to see if, yeah. if it should be before it actually hits council. And it wouldn't trigger a hearing, so this is other Because it's yeah. not, that could it's, be done. Right. it doesn't it's change what we're doing, really it just really changes how we describe what we're doing. Okay. So it would still be the same. Okay. Thank you very much. So on either of these, are there any more questions for the public hearing portion of this, or can we? You call for opponents for opponents. Do we have to do that, generally, before we close the public hearing? Certainly. Our one member of the public, would you like to make a comment? We, we won't stigmatize her as an opponent or a proponent. We'll just give her a chance to make public comment if she wishes to. I'd love to. Um, well, as you folks probably know, we favor the 40 art districts. We think they're a great tool to be used to promote affordable housing. That's part of the mission of Valley CDC. Um, on the second question, just as a developer, often working with um, complex state and federal programs that can take a long time. Um, as a general rule, we would definitely see a benefit in having a longer permit period. Um, it is the sad reality that it can take that long to really get the project financed and ready to go. So we would see that as a benefit. And it's hard to get somebody to buy in until you're permitted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. I think that exhausts our ability to get comment from the public. Um, so any other questions for anyone relative to the public hearing portion of our gathering here? Hearing none, a motion to close the public hearing would be in order. Mm -hmm. to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any not in favor? The, just one, now that our, our that business portion is done, I still am very apprehensive when we have public hearings and the language shows up at the public hearing. I'm kind of uncomfortable with that. And uh, that happens far too often that we have a public hearing and the language just shows up at the public hearing. If someone were to ask a question ahead of time about what we're going to discuss, it would be a little embarrassing to say. We don't actually know. <laughs> but come and see. You know, it'd be nice to have it all be in place. but. So, so I, I guess I should ask the question, should I be the stopgap for that? Or Because you do forward it to, um, you do refer it out to committees. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering. Yeah, and it goes out, you know, in, in the case where, you know, in this case, the determination was made that the planning board's public hearing is still effective because it wasn't a substantive change. But it's a change nonetheless. And, mm -hmm. and certainly when council gets it, you know, if it shows up at council and it's changed yet again, I think I'd pitch a fit. But, you know, having a hearing for something that shows up and the ink's still wet is a little scary as far as public process is concerned to me. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I agree. I, mean, I think we should have, and it's incumbent upon us to communicate what we want as well. You know, so, I mean, maybe we should have just a set policy. Maybe you know, for the next month, next meeting, maybe we can discuss this and say, look, here's exactly the format. We did change the rules. We changed how the ordinances look a little bit. Maybe we need just like a manual say, please give us this in this format. Mm -hmm. Or um, even like, when does it arrive? And, and you know, that's a bigger concern of mine is when it arrives. You know, yeah, the, when theoretically, the public makes a determination if they're going to attend an event yeah. by what is going to be discussed at the event. And when we don't even know until we get here, does that deny the public the you know, opportunity to know, do I or don't I want to go and participate in this? And we wouldn't want to be so strict because the planning, yeah. planning gets them up, got changes from the state mm -hmm. at an inconvenient time for them in which they can't yeah. control. But you know, yeah, there should be some. And, and you know, it may well be 
that it stays the way it is and then we then make a determination when we get here we're uncomfortable with having a hearing on this right you know I mean the burden ultimately falls on us to say yeah we'll sign off on it being a real public hearing because the changes were not substantive or we say no 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 we're gonna have to do some communication and republish and have another hearing because this is not it's different enough that the public has been denied <coughs> their choice to come and comment but I don't think that we crossed that threshold here but it's another occasion when the ink's not dry on the stuff when we're having a public hearing on it okay. and that, that a situation could arise where it did substantively change what people's perception of what we were talking about was going to be and they say wait a minute how did this happen it wasn't what we were told was going to be discussed there or it's different than what we were told I mean ideally once it's posted and the documents are available to the public those should yeah be the but they certainly weren't if they were just screeching into us and I think in this instance you know I think I'm inclined to agree with Carolyn they weren't substantive changes so that no one's being denied their ability to comment on something because they didn't know what were what exactly the final version was and so in this case I think it isn't a problem but I think it's something that we need to be aware of mm -hmm. when we do this and you know make sure we're conscious of the fact that if it's last-minute language that it didn't substantially change what, what we're having a public hearing for and if it would have changed the public's desire to come or not in the first place of comment but that was sort of an editorial comment and ultimately it's our responsibility to sign that so for these two now that we're done with our public hearing um, the first one which is 17 to 89 and that's uh, well actually 17 to 89 is one we just got finished dealing with which is the one that expands the permitting time they're in one order in the public hearing and another for us to vote on it um, somebody want to make a motion on that one I move a favorable recommendation a second. Second. any more discussion on that one all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then the second one um, is the modified ordinance to add a new smart go overlay district um, at the state hospital. That's the 17251, which also contains the adding the new district is the, the change that was made, but if it in fact is the, the one on Bridge Street as well. That we've talked about before. Point of order: Is it 250 or 251? Two, he, he meant that one. Yeah, it's 17250. Oh, Sorry. Includes <laughs> includes the new state hospital district <laughs> and the not the one, but and the district on Bridge Street that we had known about before. I would move favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Are there any more discussion on that one? Oh, I, I just want to add that around, I, I, I want to commend the Valley CDC for all of the outreach that they did around the, uh, their project for Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that they, they, they worked with me, with the 43 Neighborhood Association, they put out flyers, they met with people. Laura's been terrific and, uh, and available for any questions and so, you know, based on all of that outreach, I'm completely comfortable in giving a favor. And, and for the people watching at home, this is the underlying zoning. This is not the permit for Bridge Street. So we're, our voting here does not issue the permit for Bridge Street. That's not our jurisdiction. This simply permits the underlying zoning so that the permit can then be discussed. Any other? Uh, you know, I, I, oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I just wanted to clarify that my motion is to recommend the red line. Version, yeah, the, with the understanding it would be incorporated with the rest of it. Yeah, presented to the council. Yeah. Um, then I would also like to ask. I think our senior land use planner recommended an, a, one additional change that was not written in the red line version that perhaps we need for the record under the definition. For, for design guidelines. For design guidelines, and I guess I would ask if, if Ms. Powers has that. 
text or if it needs to be no I mean that was literally so I printed this and then five minutes later I got that other language in the state so I added it oh no I know yeah. I know she did, doesn't have my email but you stated it out loud so I was wondering oh yeah I can get her the hard copy do you want me to leave it with um, you now I just want well, can, can we just ask you um, So that will be included in the red line version that comes to council. Right, and so the way I understand it, you want the entire ordinance and the red line within it, even the sections that are not being changed, um, to be incorporated in the. You want the red line to be just the changes, so we get the whole or composite ordinance as it will be when it's changed, and then the red line version would be just the changes, or do you want the whole thing? I don't want the whole zoning chapter I want the whole I want every every section that's being changed oh, yeah okay so that's what I handed out tonight yeah. was every section that was being changed within that mm -hmm. whole section right that would include is the language that you told us about that isn't in there right now that right the state that. saying you, you can do the design guidelines in accordance with 40R right. basically sorry to clarify thank you is is the only section we're changing section 20 for that is section 20 but there is there's 20 and then there are 20 subsections of 20 but not every one of those subsections are being yeah. uh, modified I think for this I would like all, I would request we have the entirety of section 20 okay Unless and we have with to the red lines the public in. shade tree commission if we're going to be killing trees or something I'm going to send it to you electronically. Whether you demand to have paper copies is your own thing. I won't make any demands. <laughs> we'll make any demands. But I, but the reason I was asking is if we we're going to vote on this, either we're going to include the language that you stated out loud in our vote, or we're going to put that in as an amendment in the council. Because I, I don't like okay. voting on stuff and then so is it assuming it's not in there. So are you referring to what's up on the screen right now, the design guidelines? No, because there was, um, I just printed it out on one sheet before I got here. I didn't have time to make copies. And um, the placeholder text was guidelines are allowed as provided in mass. Right, and that's been edited to be for the purposes of this section, the term design guidelines shall refer to and be subject to the requirements of the term design standards as provided for under section 10 of MGL 40R and 760 CMR 59.041F. So it's really a reference then. Yeah. It's not it's not a substantive change. It's simply a reference right. to it's where you find it. It's not that substantive, but I want to either vote on it or not. Yeah, so I can give you this um, I can give the hard copy to Pam and then email it to you in, okay. in the morning. Um, it's just this, these sentences right there. Okay, so you're changing what's on the screen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're just adding, adding in, uh, yeah. That little bit. To reference. So, so yeah. You want to make Where a they motion to yeah, I, I would move to that we amend this ordinance to reflect those changes. Under the design guidelines. I mean, we have a second for the amendment. Second. Any discussion on the amendment? Okay. Aye. Aye. Now to the ordinance as amended. Back to that. With the with the language that is now the amended in there. Any more discussion on that one? I just like to thank Carolyn because actually, you know, it's very impressive. I know you've gone back and forth a lot on this and work this state, but it's actually, I don't know, it's, it's really interesting. And it will do a lot of good for the city, so it's really, it's really impressive work, so thank you. Any other? No. All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any not in favor? Good. Thank you. Now we're working comfortable council meeting. <clears throat> two. Two. <laughs> yeah, Maybe two council meetings and then part one, part two. And then you can put your program together. May, May 18th and June 1st. May 18th and June 1st. Put that in your, okay, your thank phone. You. All right. So the um, 
we've done those two. Uh, the taxi ordinance is still in another committee, and the parking ordinance is still in another committee, so we're not going to act on those tonight, correct? Mm -hmm. you know, technically, didn't the Transportation and Parking Commission pass out the taxi ordinance? It was only subsequently that more things were identified. But, but it went to a different committee too, didn't it? Community City resources. Community resources, because they're the ones they deal with that. Park. Somehow taxis, they got the taxi thing going on there. So Life. they're the ones we're deferring to. Okay. Right. Well, yeah, you should be me trying to keep track of all this. <laughs> right. So is there any new business that we didn't anticipate? Well, we talked about setting up, um, you know, like guidelines for when we'd like to get materials, and do we want to talk about that? Yeah, I want to know where that discussion is going to happen, whether it's going to be here or somewhere yeah. else. Or and it, it may well be um, because it affects all the committees. Yeah. It affects any, essentially any committee that could be doing a public hearing. You know, at what point are we going to insist that the material that's going to be discussed at the public hearing has to be complete prior to us noticing on a public <coughs> hearing? You know, or are we going to have them run? I mean, because it happens with planning all the time. They're yeah. always running in and saying, well, here's the most recent version, or, you know, the red line's got changed, or we thought about it, and now's what we want to do. And they're also the ones making the determination to tell us it isn't a substantive change. You know, at some point we should say, when you advertise the public hearing, you cannot change the document anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, until, until you know, you or tell us we're gonna not use that public hearing and we're gonna have another one because you fiddle with the with the material again. You know, it is a little unsettling. I, I don't want anybody in the public saying, Well, you changed it and when I reviewed it and decided not to come to the public hearing, I reviewed this. But when you got to the public hearing, you discussed different material that had been changed, and I never bothered to look at it again because I thought I had reviewed what you were going to be discussing, and that and that I'm uncomfortable with. Yeah, that that that, that would occur. So, and there's nothing in the present rules for public hearings that stipulates a time. Not for about public material. No, not about public hearings, but certainly you know there's there's cutoff times when things need to be handed over to be put up placed on the agenda. Mm -hmm. so. But you can see where somebody might be intrigued by an agenda item, go online, review the material, and go, no, I guess that doesn't really affect me. But then by the time it gets here, it got diddled with, and it does affect them, and they would want to have come. Uh, but they've dismissed it because they looked at it, and they didn't think it could be changed again before the public hearing. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say that the, the, even after it gets referred out, I mean, there is that 48-hour window before I post things mm -hmm. that, you know, that uh, could be considered nothing changes after this if it's if it once it's posted. Yeah. And, and, and I think it's, <coughs> you know, I think it's a discussion for the council as a whole because yeah. it could matriculate in any one of our committees that might be doing it. I think it needs to be a council-wide policy, not a committee-by-committee committee policy, because then, you know, they'll be going, oh, God, what does this committee want us to do? Because <laughs> the council has, gives, I agree. yeah, because yeah, the council does public hearings as a whole, mm -hmm. you know, as a body of the whole, and then sometimes individual committees do them, and it should be the same rules for all of them, just so the staff doesn't have to wonder what, what it's the rules this time, yeah. and that all, and then we know we just have we have to remember one set of rules whether we're in a committee or whether we're at the council. I mean, what when does how late can they make changes and things? Maybe it's when they get posted. You know. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think there might be a role for this committee to play in putting out a, a recommendation to the council rather than just opening it up mm -hmm. one day on the floor of the council for discussion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it would be crucial to consult with the administrative assistant to the city council yeah. about how this would work. Mm -hmm. And so I would suggest at some point maybe we could have a proposal that we debate. I know we want ordinances to be referred to this committee before they before we do anything about them, mm -hmm. but the yeah. rules the same so, way. I mean, but theoretically, within the next you know, because theoretically everybody knows when it leaves here that's the final version. Right. The other committees make recommendations. We take all those recommendations and incorporate them when they leave here 
the only place they can be changed that is on the council floor. Yeah. But that's what goes to council. And if it gets changed, it gets changed by the council at a meeting with the public here. I also think we should have a rule against imaginary amendments. I don't know what else to call them. But for example, like the ordinance that we just recommended still says, even though we, adjust, we adjusted it last time, it still says this shall take effect by May question mark. And then I think the administrative position, if you're on, in the planning department, is that's no problem because we'll just change it. But I don't, I, I don't think that's the role of this committee. I think we have to vote on text. What's, what's in front of us? And so if there are changes, the planning department should bring amendments. You know, like I think we should, I think we should consider what was given to us by a certain date. And then if the planning board has amendments, amendments are okay to consider. Yeah, then bring another page and yeah. say, okay, since we submitted this, yeah. this and this and this came up. The only time that becomes a problem is if it's a public hearing and the changes are substantive enough that we say, we got to have another public hearing for this because people and the, did Yeah. And not the monopoly, just, just one brief final comment on that is, I mean, it's not as much of a problem in Northampton, I think, because we have um, so much respect for our planning department and our professional staff. But if you take out the individual people who we all know and respect out of it, say you have a different mayor, you have a different planning director, different counselors, just say you make bad law, you know? So it would be good to have a rule. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I just wanted to ask you, I, I didn't see a date in this, in this particular version of the document. Oh, really? And okay. I did see that the date was removed. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then I had a question after I saw it removed that it, it says that it's the, the map on <coughs> file in the city clerk's office period. So then what happens when you change the map? How do you distinguish that from earlier versions of it and that sort of thing? So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe the date is not the right marker for mm -hmm. that document. Maybe it's a document number or something, mm -hmm. you know, That's and, interesting. Yeah. and um, yeah. but, but I did see that the, that the, the date piece of it was removed. Um, It'd be interesting the, uh, you know, if it's to, if we're if we're adopting it, if we're if what we're doing is adopting an option given to us under state law, for all we know, the state law says that if you adopt it, it will go into effect 90 days after you adopt. It. I mean, how do we know it doesn't say that? Mm -hmm. We don't. You know, that may be yeah. that so may be inscribed in the state enabling enabling legislation, or it could be retroactive to the beginning. Who knows? Without yeah. seeing the entire state. Councilor O'Donnell, I see yes. three fifty twenty point three. And which document? Since we have three of them. You're looking at the red line, red line one. The red That's line. The one I'm looking at. Twenty. I'm sorry. Can you give me the number again? Three fifty twenty point three. Okay. 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 That's where that's where it was before. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that's right. Wait, uh, shown on the map entitled Sustainable Growth the Overlay District. Yeah. So they took out the dates. Yes, they did. So, so what happens when you update the map two years from now? Right, it would automatically cover whatever changes. Right. It'll incorporate the change. You're right. I don't know. I don't know how that's commonly handled in other communities. Or maybe it's not really a problem. I don't know. Is it enough to say current, current map? I guess it doesn't solve the problem mm -hmm. here. Right? Yeah. Well, and we've already had that version, version number of a document. That's what I'm We've also yeah. had that issue come up quite recently, where we change the underlying zoning, and then down the road sometime change the map to reflect, <laughs> and then. And then they say, well, we didn't need to mail notice to change the zoning, but we did to change the map. But the baby was already gone with the bathwater. We're changing the map as a perfunctory thing because you can't do that anymore, except you got no notice when we said you couldn't do it anymore, but you didn't. We changed the map to reflect the change, which yeah. is a little goofy. Yeah. For the record, the exact section that Ms. Powers just mentioned, in one of the other versions of it, which was the whole replacement, non-red line one, it did still have 
the date. Sustainable growth overlay is dated May question mark question mark 2017. Right. So, so so what had happened was that was the original document that came to the committee, and then your comments. Um, oh, I see. Ended up making a change that was a, that inadvertently got attached to the back side of oh, 17.289. So it oh, was okay. taken out. Sorry. So that was yeah. the original. Then there was the replacement. Yeah. And there was the red line. Right. Of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now we're back to exactly what document are we talking about today? Right? Because they keep changing. Them. And who got this on the screen yeah, from the end? Yeah, it's <laughs> multiple documents of. Yeah, and, and one that just shows up tonight, you know? So if you yeah. if we did our homework, it's moot because now they changed it again. So. so just to bring this conversation sort of back full circle to what we started with this kind of new business reform thing we're talking about here. Um, are we suggesting that if, it, so once something is posted, that's the document, but it doesn't mean that when we have a hearing, you can't bring amendments to it. Right. But yeah. we want them in writing, like a document, or we want the amendment separate as an amendment. Yeah. And, and that way we can determine does it substantively change it or not? Because now we just get here's your new version. Right. You know, and right. we're in, in regulations, wordsmithing makes a difference. And I have seen them say we just cleaned up the language, but in wordsmithing it changed the meaning. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long did we fight about is in the 90s? You know, uh, mm. um, it, it changes it, even if it's just wordsmithing. So that way, at least after the posted version, anything else they want to change comes up as an amendment. We got to vote on, and we can discuss: does it change the meaning of it substantially or not? Yeah. Which means we could be in a public hearing deciding we need to have another public. Yeah. yeah. Or or not close it. Or just continue it, and. Um, Advertise, you know, to say it's going to keep going, which would be the thing you do is keep it going. But the council chair's point, which I agree with, is 100% correct. Um, from time to time, there might be a verbal amendment. Like, it sounds like Carolyn just found out today from, you know, whoever in the state is controlling this project or has authority of this project that she wanted that one definition be changed. It's okay from time to time for it to be a verbal amendment, but it shouldn't be our practice. Mm -hmm. And it should be an amendment. It shouldn't be like, oh, mm -hmm. we assume that this committee agreed with the amendment. Like, we should actually pass mm -hmm. text. Yeah, no, and I would like you to add this yeah. amendment yeah. based on a phone call I got when I was walking over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, mm -hmm. yeah. What, what I might suggest is, can would you have a discussion with our Fearless Leader, Council President Bill, mm -hmm. about a recommendation given the, your logistics as to what we might want, what you might want to recommend through him to us that we set up for a, this is the version we're discussing and anything past that must be an amendment because you guys keep track of the flow of all this stuff and you know practically speaking when, when you make it public. And that then could come back and recommend to us, okay, we'd suggest you pick when I do this as the any other changes have to be an amendment date and then bring it back. You Because know, I, I agree we shouldn't throw it out as a free-for-all. be nice to make a recommendation. But you and Bill should probably think about our, the flow of this stuff and say, okay, we recommend it be here, this, this date, this version, because of this, this, and this. And then we can say, does that feel good? Because I hate to impose on Pam and Bill who manage this flow, what what the most appropriate time would be without letting them think about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and for process, would be, because I know we're sensitive about not originating issues in this committee, we'd like to refer them, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, the public is sensitive about that. Um, and we sort of made you know agreement to not do that. Could we put in like a placeholder rule for the next meeting? And I, I can write it if you want. It would just, I don't know what it would say. And then we refer it to this committee so we'd have it, and then we could tinker with it upon the reflection of Ms. Powers and Council President. So you want that for the City Council meeting? To refer so it? So we could refer it. Yeah. Of course we could wait. But two meetings. we, we we're just we sort it. of requesting. Yeah, as a committee, we're just sort of requesting you and Bill think about it, come up with a recommendation that then gets referred 
Yeah. And then we'll, it'll not start here, but it'll come from Absolutely. you and Bill to us okay. after you've thought about the concept and what do you want to call. When is it, when, when, at what point do any other changes have to be made as amendments mm -hmm. to things, particularly for public hearings? Because the public, you know, for regular, regular things we discuss, it's one thing, but public hearings are implicitly set, explicitly set up for the public to come in here and they they got to be able to count on the fact that if they looked at it, it's not gonna, it's not okay. going to just change. I, I can I can work on. Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Thank you. Any other new business? A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.